Well, hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Bradley Salyers, and this is... Allison Gaddy. Yeah, and we're with the Master Agent Club, masteragentclub.com, and the Master Agent Club Facebook group. And we just want to thank you for joining us on uh, the our live launch event for the Master Agent Club. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here. Yeah. So this is... A, hey, thanks. You, you, you can cheer. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> so... We're launching the masteragentclub.com. If you are on the web and you're watching this, jump on there and grab your free founders membership where you're going to get special perks, discounts, and deals and things like that all year long for being a free founding member and joining us day one because we just launched that website today. Today. Yeah. All right. So uh, we're at the Bloodworks Live studio in downtown Portland, and we are uh, here for our launch event where we have uh, an amazing speaker for you today, and he is going to blow your minds to help you to grow your business in 2020. Allison, tell us about this speaker. Absolutely. So our uh, one of our co-founders and, uh, and partners in the Master Agent Club is Don Hobbs, and I am super excited to introduce him today for our first live event here in Portland, Oregon. So for those of you that know a gentleman by the name of Jim Rohn, Don started his career back uh, when he was 18 with uh, with Jim Rohn and a, a little little guy named Tony Robbins. Tony was 17. And uh, he uh, then started a company called Hobbs Herder Advertising. He's spoken uh, for over a million real realtors in his life. He's been a coach, a trainer, an, Im an influencer, a motivator, and we're really, really lucky to have him yeah. sharing 2020 vision with us today. So, uh, Don, come on up. Don Hobbs, everybody. Woo everybody, give him the energy. Woo I do need that. Good afternoon. It's better than that, actually. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good That's better. I'm very excited to be here in this master agent launch. Uh, what a cool deal. And it's kind of fun just to be on kind of the inside cameras and all that stuff. And we, don't, we are going to do all of our events like this, but this is kind of a fun start for everything. So we're super excited about that. Um, I'm very excited about um, this program. And I want to tell you why. We um, Actually, this was not intended. This was... I think this was booked like 30 days ago. This is usually these things are, you know, way out, right? And we were doing an event in Las Vegas, and I did a little mini version of this. I think it was one you were talking about, Brad, and uh, just did this little 45 minute thing, and it just blew up. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, that was crazy. It was good. So I was like, it is good stuff, and we are coming into the end of the year, which is the time that we really got to grab hold of the energy, figure out how to keep the momentum going through the end of the year into the new year, because by the way, how you finish. One year is how you start the next. Yes? Do you agree? Yes. How many would like to start it with a bang instead of start it with a lull? Yeah. yeah. See, that's and that's really the interesting part is, unfortunately, most agents. They, you know, I did a. Um, where is um, where is Mr. Oh, my mind just totally blanked out. Um, 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 um. Where is he? We have a we did, the uh, we, we did the live. We went live the other day. Was, Oh, Justin Stoddard. Justin Stoddard. Yeah, Justin. There he is. Justin, I'm like, I, I, know, I, I know if I looked at him, I'd see him. There he is. So Justin and I went live the other day, and we were talking about this, this idea, but it's like this, um, this time of year, agents have told me for, like, this is my 40th year in the real estate space. So for years, they've been telling me, like, this is the slow season. I'm like, you're the slow season. It's you. It's not the season. I know people that had their best years during this time of the year. This is crazy to think that it has anything to do with the season. It has to do with our attitude and our preparation. And so I want to take you through today what I believe is a great plan for getting not only the most out of the next, what, we've got six weeks left, give or take, and then how do we roll into the new year, but most importantly, how we start this, this momentous occasion today is how we're going to really roll, right? That's the way we're going to go. So this is really about gaining a lot of ener energy, a lot of momentum, uh, most importantly about planning, about structure, about planning. So I got a lot of stuff. We may not get through all of it. We'll see. We, you know, we're going to have this fairly casual uh, way of doing things here too, by the way, because we're on camera doesn't mean it's formal. We might just stop and go, okay, we're going to do that again. So we might, we might not. Uh, you know, I've, I've certainly been known to do this all in one take, but we'll see. So regardless, I want to make sure that you guys are just here for the fun of it. How many would like to learn a ton that would allow you to make 2020, not only the year, the 2020 year, but how many would like to make that new decade like rocking at a, at a very high level? Okay, so what's that going to take? What's it going to take to really make that happen? And it is truly about changing something up because if it's not been working for you the way it's been going, then you've got to change something. If it's been going well for 
uh, this time, and I understand I've been talking to people up here and they're saying, well, the market's a little off, it's a little different. You know, uh, that happens, right? We'll talk about that, it happens. But the reality is that even in down times, you can have up times. So most of this is really about adjusting our mindsets, adjusting our plans, adjusting our situation. And so literally, we want to make sure that you're kind of in a position here. You, you got it? Okay. It didn't, but now, now it did. You're on it. Got it. So we're going to talk about building momentum. We're really going to be dealing with some of the, the quick and easy things like leverage. You know, where do we leverage ourselves? Where can we get points of leverage? How do we get more out of our days without having to work harder? All in favor of that, say aye. Aye. Okay, so really, because... For most of us, if I want to do more next year, we think, okay, I'm not sure I'm willing to pay the price of that. And I'm going to suggest to you it's not a price to pay, it's just a different structure. It's a different way of thinking. So we want to go through that. We've also got about building vision because I believe vision is the start of everything. And unfortunately, most of us don't ever get a vision. We get up every day and we do what we did yesterday. And we do it a lot like we did yesterday. And we don't have a vision for where it's going. There is no start with the end in mind because we don't have a clue where we're going. And that's not really a knock on anybody. I started a company called Hobbs Herder Advertising. Amy, you were there with us. And I remember when we started that company, and I just left Jim, Jim Rohn's company. Who knows Jim Rohn, by the way? Who knows who he is? If you don't know who he is, make a note. Jim, R-O-H-N, Rohn. You got to look him up, because if you don't know who he is, you're missing like the master. You're missing the, the dude of all dudes. When he, when he passed almost 10 years ago to the day, when he passed, they had a... a a celebration, if you will, at the Anaheim Convention Center, and we had like 12,000 people come, and the biggest names in the speaking world, I mean, the biggest names, you name anybody at all, they were there. Dennis Waitley, you name every psychologist, every author, everybody, they were all there and acknowledging him because he was the guy that all started it for us. Zig Ziglar and Jim Rome were the guys, right? So I got a good, the good fortune to start with him when I was 18 years old, and, and so there's some real history there, and I'll tell you more about that as we lay things out. But I think I was on a track for a second. Where was I going with that? The reason I said that was because Amy looks at her notes. Oh, because we started, I left Jim's company and we were going to start this, this little operation called Hobbs Herder Advertising. Me, Hobbs, and Herder got together and we had an assistant part time. That was the whole idea, right? We were trying to figure out how do we fill a room full of people? How do we get like 30 people in a room? <laughs> Crazy, right? And, uh, and actually, it was funny. I'll tell you a quick story about that because I don't want to take too much time on this stuff. But I went to, I had just come out of Phoenix. I had just been doing a big promotion in Phoenix. And I had a lot of friends there, a lot of realtors that loved me there. And I said, we're going to go to Phoenix, Greg. We're going to start in Phoenix because if we screw this thing up, we do not want to screw it up in our backyard. <laughs> right? So we did. We went to Phoenix. We did the first event there, 242 <coughs> people. And we screwed it up royally. Like we would have never lasted if it had been in our backyard. But we screwed it up in Phoenix. We didn't ever have to go back there, right? <laughs> we did. Eventually, people forgave us. But it, it wasn't that bad. But it, if I hadn't been doing it, I would have gone home. It was just horrible, okay? But I remember that when we started that company, we didn't know what we were doing. We were just trying to take the first step and fill a room. We were just trying to make the next thing happen. But when you think about business, if you start a business, look at the big businesses today that are starting up and they have a vision. We're going to create this product and we're going to sell it to somebody that's going to make us a, a millionaire, right? That's going to make us a gazillionaire. We're, we're building things. We're starting a company with something in mind. What is it? Sell it. Finish it. End it. Here's where we're going to step out. Here's the event. In real estate, we don't do that. We start up, we're hope, happy to sell our first house. And 10 years later, we're happy to sell the next house. That's not a business plan. That's not a business structure. That's not, to, that's not anything to do with business. That's like being a salesperson. And salespeople make good money. Business owners at the highest level make humongous money. And today I want to give you a real shot at doing that. So uh, we're also going to get into reverse engineering your success, which is exactly what I'm referring to. Building a schedule that you will follow, which seems so mundane and boring. I've got a schedule. I've got a calendar. Yeah, but you don't have one that, that rocks it for you. If you did, you'd be rocking it at a higher level. And I'm telling you that when you want to structure something different, it starts with the schedule. So we're going to get that figured out. And a, a big punch of this is going to revolve around momentum and then some tools. Because what I also know is you can mentally go, hey, I'm really excited about it. But unless you got some tools, unless you do something different, it's going to be the same. So all in favor of that working out today? Does that, that seem like a good thing? Yeah. If we did that, would that be good? Yes. All right. So. With that in mind, I want to take you through a couple things because what I realized, and I've been a student of time for a long time, doesn't mean I've mastered it. I don't know how you master time, but I will tell you that I've been a student of it and pretty good at it for a long time. And why I'm pretty good is, 
At 18, I met Jim Rohn. At 19, I came to a conclusion. At 19, looking around the room with a lot of business people that were very successful, not being one of them, I'm just saying, I was a salesperson for Jim Rohn trying to fill rooms full of people, like I did when I started Hobbs Heard, just trying to get 30 more people in the room, right? That was, that was what I did. But I looked around and I saw these successful people and I realized that the most successful people that I was watching had the same 24 hours I did, yet they were making tons more. And like that hit me, that actually hit me. At 19 years old, it was clear to me there was something different. And you know, Roan's first line that I remember writing down was, uh, to have more, you've gotta become more. And he was like, uh, work harder on yourself than you do on your job, work on your attitude. And yet I got that attitude is a big deal. If your attitude sucks, you're gonna suck. But I'm gonna tell you that the biggest differentiator between great attitudes who fail and succeed is time. It is by far the most important thing. How do we use time? We all have the same 24 hours, and the fact is some people have gotten really good at using it, investing in it, putting things into it. So a lot of today is gonna to be about that because it really seems like we need some, some kind of a structure to, to hold all that time. But when I was 19 years old, I remember reading like uh, Time Management by uh, Alan Lakin. I was reading a lot of books. And then fast forward, I go through 23 years of Hobbs Herder. I retire, I'm done. And then this little thing hit the economy and I guess I wasn't done after all. I was like, okay, I'm not done. I lost a ton and came back to work. But when I came back to work, I started a real estate company and, and far more important, about three or four years later, a guy by the name of Gary Keller, anybody know who he is? He started a little company, and it was real little when I met him. Actually, I met him in 1989. I spoke for the first convention in Keller Williams history. There was a total in the whole company of 350 agents. So if, if you were ever with Keller Williams, you know that that would be like tiny compared to where it is now. So apparently whatever I said at that first convention was magic <laughs> because it just blew that company up. And uh, it, apparently it was just you know phenomenal. So I met Gary back in, in that, that era, and I remember that when... I joined him. The reason I joined him is he called me one day and said, I just realized that you'd retired. He said, I just realized that you're kind of out there with nothing to do. And I said, no, I got something to do. He said, well, come and join me. He had just written a book called The One Thing. Anybody read the book? Still considered, I think, the highest ranked business book of all times. If you haven't read it, put it on your list. Make it a note. Good book. So I came to Austin, Texas, moved from Southern California where I'd been all my life, moved to Austin, Texas, and we did this thing where we put this company together for everybody not real estate. Ironically, it was a business book. It wasn't a real estate book. And I'm going to tell you that when I coach, when I train, almost everything I teach, in fact, Hobbs Herder was based not on a real estate book. It was based on a marketing book. And I believe that if you learn business, you'll do better in real estate. If you learn real estate, you'll be pretty much like every other realtor. I don't study real estate nearly as much as I study business because business is where it really explodes. When you understand that and apply it in real estate, you're called genius, right? So I had the good fortune to work with Gary for four years. Uh, I could not stand the corporate structure. I hated every second of it. And I hadn't had a job since I was 19 and apparently I'm certifiably unemployable. So I'm not, I just couldn't stay. So I left there and we began to you know, think about what I was gonna do to recreate it. Allison had some great ideas, we began that. We met Bradley a few months back. We started putting this together and here we are. So this is kind of the evolution, right? But I want you to hear one thing because even through the time management stuff with Gary and this one thing, which was all about focus, all about how do we do the thing that's the most important thing, right? How do we do that one thing? And what I'm gonna share with you is it's always still been about time and how we focus our energy in that time. So this is really the, the journey we're on today. It's really about how do we have the same 24 hours that everybody else has and get a life. Okay, now a life. Speaking of a life, what kind of life does a realtor have? None. <laughs> None. So I've been around uh, one million of them. Allison said this. I've spoken for one million realtors. I've had the good fortune through the years, all these years, to speak for realtors. That's been my primary audience, except that little gap with Gary. Other than that, it's all been realtors. So what I know about your business that's kind of crazy is that it's a, a funny place. How many got into the business to make a lot more money and have a lot more time? How many are laughing because that's the opposite of what happened? So we got in to have a lot more freedom, a lot more money, a lot more flexibility, a lot more everything. And then we're like on call 24 hours. And I, I argue with realtors all the time. They're like, you don't understand my business. They, when the client calls, they expect you to be there. I'm like, I totally understand your business and you're an idiot. You have no life. 
because it's not about them, it's about you. It's about scheduling your business and dis- determining what your business is gonna look like. It's your business, not their business. So we'll talk about that. It's probably gonna slap some of you on the face, but, but the big deal is that we really have to look at the fact that this life called real estate is kind of weird because we got in for time and money that we had neither. We're pulling our hair out. We've got less money. We're trying to figure it out. It's stressful. We're going through, if nothing else, the peaks and valleys of income. How many have ever had that experience? Riches, no riches, riches, no riches. We're killing it. Let's go on vacation. We come back after vacation. We've done nothing. We're like, oh my gosh, I got nothing in escrow. I got nothing going. I feel poor. And we lived that way for so many years. I don't know what's, what's in the back here. But here's what I do know, and that is that if you will determine, if you've never decided this before, make it today. If you've decided before, time to renew. What is it that you're going to be a business owner? That you are going to finally figure out how to run a business and stop doing what realtors do. Realtors are primarily broke. Don't copy them. Don't do that. They're broke. I mean, most of them are just broke. They've been doing a long time, most of them, and they don't have any money. So don't copy what they do. Let's do something very different. All agreed? Yes. Yes. It's about how do we go from entrepreneurial to purposeful? How do we go from doing what seems natural and comes natural to my personality and how do we do what really works in business? See, to this day, when I I ran into some people at a conference in uh, April of this year, and we're just, there were two new agents and a veteran agent and me talking and the veteran knew me and he said, what would you recommend to them? And I said, I'm gonna give you, I think I gave him four books, but I might say five and I'll tell you what they are. I'll tell you what they are. The first book I said, I want you to read five books. Not, not one of them is real estate. I said, I'll give five books. The first one I said was, you have got to, I think the first one I gave them was, might have been the one thing. Let's, let's do that. The one thing, let's, it's one of them for sure. Another one of them I said was, one of the best business books of all times called The E-Myth Revisited. If you've not read it, Get it. If you've read it, read it again, especially in the context of our time to together today. Read it from that perspective. Read it from, from the thoughts that you'll have after this program, okay? Um, let's see, another one is called Expert Secrets. Expert Secrets. Anybody know who this guy named Russell Brunson is? So Russell Brunson is a guy that I would call the Tony Robbins of marketing. The dude rocks. Allison had found him. When we started dating, we have a funny story, and I'll tell you about that. We, we, we say I survived 150 first dates because she was not dating me, but I was dating her for quite a while. So it, was, uh, it, 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 it has worked out, but it, it didn't work out early. It w- didn't work out right away. Um, but she, I, you know, we were really in, starting to get in this relationship, and I'm, I'm coming over. We're going to make dinner. We're going to do this stuff. And she's like, Russell, Russell, Russell this and Russell that and Russell whatever. I'm like... Who is this freaking Russell dude? Do I have to beat somebody up? I mean, I've been fighting for two and a half years to get here. And now I come here and we're having dinners and like making life happen. And you're talking about Russell. Who's this Russell dude? And it was Russell Brunson. And he's brilliant. He's really smart. We've been up. Uh, she's a certified partner, if you know what that means. He's, uh, he's a big deal in marketing. She's a big deal because she studied a lot and because she's just really smart anyway. And uh, Russell Brunson would be one of them. So expert secrets. How do you take your, your passion, how do you take that thing that you're so um, committed to and put it into the marketplace in a way that people love you and want to do business with you, et cetera, right? That makes sense? It's great. Kind of an online approach, but I do want you to read it. And then I would tell you that, uh, let's see, what else did I have? The 12-week year. We're going to do some stuff today. And I'm going to tell you that this 12-week year, uh, funny thing, funny story, I remember somebody telling me there was a book called The 12-Week Year. I'd never read the book. I didn't read the book until almost, I don't know, maybe seven months ago. And I I heard the title and I went, oh, that's so smart. I know exactly how to make that work. Like I just got it. And I'm going to show you today what my philosophy is in relation to it. When you read the book, it's going to support it, but it's different. It's it's a little different. And of course, my, my greatest... Uh, joy is to take books like that and translate them for you into real trees so you can figure out how to make them yours and make them work for you, right? In real estate world. And I have no idea what the fifth book was, so let's we're not worry about it. I'll, I'll have many, many books I'll give you, and I'll go, oh, that's the fifth one. That's the one right there. So let's not worry about it. But the point is, we've got to get good at this thing called time because time is the, the, the bucket through which everything happens, and we've got to master it. So the one thing that occurs to me, <clears throat> excuse me, 
is this question at the bottom here, and that is, is your business serving you? I met an executive for one of the biggest, fastest growing real estate companies in the whole world, this company called eXp. And I met this guy named uh, Glenn Sanford. And I remember I walked up to him and I introduced myself to him and he said, no, we've already met. He said, I was in your program back in 2000 and something, four or five. And he said, in fact, one of the things that you said to me became so important to me, it was a reason why I built this company the way I did. And I was like, really? I said, is that flattery or can you tell me what it is? And he told me exactly what it was. He said, you said that the purpose of business is to serve the owner. Now, you may not like that and you may be thinking, well, wait a minute, we're there to serve the client. Yes, as long as it serves your own life. Otherwise, you are, you're going to hate it. There's no such thing as called self-sacrifice where you're going to give it all to them. You go, it sucks. I'm going broke. It's not working, but I'm doing it because I really love my clients. So you're not, it's not going to happen. So unless the business serves you, how many agree you're not going to do it long? So then the question becomes, what is it that you want so that it can actually serve you? Do you know what you want? Are you clear about that? Do you have a clue what you want the business to do to serve you? And the answer is probably not. You're just hoping to get a deal. If you could just close another escrow, close another deal. Are you in escrow state? We're, I'm from California originally, so yeah, you're escrow? Texas, we're not. We, we settle through title companies, no escrow. Um, so I really want you to think about what I'm saying because it's really about how do we get that structure in such a way and how, how many of you would love to have your life back and make twice as much as you've ever made in the history of your career in real estate, which by the way, could be weeks or years. I'm not sure. How many of you are brand new by the way? So I'm talking to you and you're like, in my whole history, I've never made that much. <laughs> who's new? Who, who, who's here less than one year? Less than one year. Okay, cool. Thanks for being here. That's awesome. Who's been here like a long time? Like who can, who can kind of get up there with me in like the 30 year plus, 30 year plus? <laughs> just Linda and me. It's just us. <laughs> just me and Linda. And Wendy. And Wendy. Wendy. How long? 34. 34. All right. I'm at 40. How many you got? 43. You win. <laughs> Linda wins. Give her a big round of applause. She wins. That's awesome. I mean, that's called dedication, by the way. Talk about commitment, right? Linda, has the business served your life? Oh, definitely, yes. Absolutely. Knowing you as I do, I'm, I'm, I was nodding my head already, but... but yeah. it's, more, it's more about, you know, taking the money you earn and getting it invested. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So this is the deal, guys. We're in a, in a world that turns like this. This is called economics. This is called markets, real estate markets. Wendy, you've been around long enough to see a few of those. Uh, this could be like 1983. Do you go back that far? No, you don't quite go back that far. 85. So this was uh, 1993 or something in that range. We had a good one, 93 to 95. Uh, this one, uh, there was others between now and then, but there was also this, this one they called like, uh, uh, wasn't the Great Depression, it was the Great Recession. 2008, we were down here, right? And we've had this incredible run. We've had an incredible run. I mean, coming off that, we've had an incredible run. Do you get that? Yes. Where are we right now? If you were going to name a letter up there, where are we in this? In this? C. C. C and a half. I love that. C and a half. Yeah, I'd, I'd definitely say B to C minimum. C, C plus. Maybe, but I don't think so. I think we're between B and C, and I don't think we've seen what's really about to happen. I don't want to scare you, but what I do want to tell you is wake up. Yeah. Not only is this year not a chance to, or not a time to go to sleep, this moment is not a time to go to sleep. This is a time to wake up. This is a time to get on in tune and on purpose. This is a time to really ramp it up, not to be resting on some laurels because no matter what you did a year ago, no matter how last year was, I'm telling you, it's not going to be the same. And some of you and many of us in this room, how many have been here only since the last recession? In other words, don't have a history before that. How many? Raise your hands if you've been in. Okay, look around the room. So let me just say this to you. If you think the market's sometimes hard and it's been rough, you ain't seen nothing because you, you haven't been through it. If that was hard, prepare to die. I'm motivating, aren't I? 
who was it that was saying that is this guy a motivator? And I'm like, no, not really. Apparently not. He never motivates anybody. So there's a there's a book. Ah, this is a good book. It wasn't one of the five, but it, uh, this is a good book. So how many of you know who uh, Robert Kiyosaki is? Right. So we got this guy that wrote the, many books actually, but he wrote Rich Dad Poor Dad and started this whole franchise, this whole series. And one of them he wrote, I think was the third book he wrote, was called This Cash Flow Quadrant. I love that because in my mind, if you guys will really understand where you are in Cash Flow Quadrant as a real estate professional, you actually could figure out how to make some serious money. Because what the Cash Flow Quadrant deals with is these four quadrants here. Starting on the left-hand side, you've got the E. The E is the employee. He said, what, what Robert said is that we get paid in one of four ways. We're all going to get paid in one of four ways. No other ways. These are the four ways. And some people have chosen the, the route called employee. It's, it's uh, sometimes safer. I'm not sure it's totally safe, but it's sometimes safer. They usually have benefits. And there's usually a steady paycheck of some sort, of course, until the company goes under or until they fire you or until they downsize and right-size you, right? But the employee is an interesting place. I think I can say safely, uh, with a, a few rare exceptions, maybe some of our sponsors, potentially, Everybody here has chosen a different path. We all said, no, hell no, I'm getting out of there. I'm not an employee anymore. I'm going for it. So I'm going into the ranks of the S. The S is the self-employed. The self-employed is where we now get to control our schedule. This is where we get to be, uh, you know, do what we want to do. That's awesome. And I said earlier, right, that, that's, that's where we find ourselves. But my question is this. What's the difference between self-employed and unemployed if you don't do things right? You earn the same amount of money. Self-employed is exactly like unemployed. But here's the deal. In the ranks of the self-employed, the words that I use, the watch words I use in that is, I do it. In the self-employed ranks, it's me, myself, and I. I do it. If it is to be, it's up to me. Well, that's great. But if you go on vacation, you don't get paid. You don't close a deal, you don't get paid. If you're an independent contractor, a self-employed, and you're a hairstylist, if you don't cut hair, you don't get paid. If you're a massage therapist, you, you get sick, you don't get paid. What's the difference between that and real estate? Nothing, nothing. So do you actually have your own business yet? And the answer is no, you actually own a job. You just happen to own the job. Nobody's gonna fire you, bless you, Chris. Nobody's gonna fire you, but you are in fact owning a job. Somebody else really has control. So we gotta get you off that left-hand side and move you, get you moved over to the right side. That's, the, that's where the, the joy starts happening. This is where good stuff starts cre being created. This is where we get to do as much and as big as we can imagine. Because on the right side, we have this thing called the B, which is the business owner. Ah. As a business owner, you've got great stuff happening if you run it like a business. And real estate, by the way, let me give you the promise. Real estate is a million-dollar-year business. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. It's a million-dollar-year business. If you're not making a million dollars, there's something that you're missing. There's some pieces that aren't in place yet. There's some systems missing. There's some things you're not doing. There's some, uh, there's, uh, some beliefs that you don't have inside. There's something missing because there are way too many people making over seven figures in this business to not believe it's possible for anybody. And by the way, I've had people making seven figures in small towns like Bend, Oregon, or that area, like in, like in Missoula, Montana. I'm not talking about just Los Angeles, Miami, you know, big markets. I'm talking about small markets where they go and start figuring out how to do 30, 40, 50, 60 million dollars a year and make a million, million and a half, two million dollars a year. It happens all the time. So just know you're in a million dollar year business, which means that's pretty cool. And you bought into it. How much did it cost you to buy into it? And the answer is almost nothing. And how much school did it take? And the answer is almost nothing, which is part of the challenge. But, but, but nonetheless, it's <laughs> the I, by the way, is the, oh yeah, the, the watchword under uh, the, the B is we do it. So now we're in the stage where it's no longer just me doing it, me, myself, and I, it's we, it's me and some other people. So now if I do go on vacation and my friend Shannon uh, Steer that works with me as a, a coaching client, Shannon just went to um, Spain for 12 days. See if this feels like it would be a good thing. She went to Spain for 12 days, didn't even take her cell phone with her. How many would love that? How many would be freaked if you tried to do that? <laughs> I don't mean kids calls. I mean, like she just didn't do any business. And when she came back, because we were doing business, not just her, 
She came back to 12 listings and nine sales all happened in the 12 days she was gone. She said, I had a really good time while I was gone. Like I did really well. And none of it was on her because it was part of her team. We do great. So that's not bad, but if you really want the ultimate, you're gonna to wanna to drop into the eye because the eye is the investor, the investor. And the investor is a place where not only is it a different watchword, it's no longer just we. In fact, uh, my friend here in front, Amy, was with us at Hobbs Herder. We got kind of that point, we came really close because we got to where we weren't doing all the seminars we used to do. We were on the road 250 days a year. Greg was 250 somewhere, I was 250 somewhere else. We were every place. And we got to the point where we did six three-day seminars a year for agents and two three-day seminars a year for managers, and that was it. We went to NAR. We spoke at NAR 18 years in a row or 17 years in a row. Other than that, we didn't do anything. Doesn't mean we didn't work. We, we didn't have to work. We weren't there. Everybody had us, right? They, they had it going for us. And I'm telling you, that's a pretty powerful place to be when they do it. When it's no longer left to me, when they do it, your hands off. How many would love to be at some point the business owner of a business where they do it? Raise your hands. Because you know that's not a normal thought in real estate. It just isn't. Most realtors will never get there because they're not even trying. They're not building for it. This is Wendy. This is the thing. Are we building for some ending point over here where I could eventually eject and be done? We're not. We're just building, what have you seen? You've been doing this for a long time, managing leaders for a long, or managing top realtors. They're not prepared for that, are they? Nope. No way. So this is where I really wanna take you guys down some, some time and really get you to think about how do we get this short-term mentality out of our system? How do we get it to go from looking for the next deal to putting ourselves in a place for getting lots of deals? How do we stop looking? I just, we just got a brand new agent that started with us about three months ago. When Marguerite started, I said, okay, this is an interesting day for you because right now your whole focus is one thing. How do I get my first deal? And I said, the scary part is in 10 years, let's get back together and talk about it. You're going to be looking for your next deal. And I said, or you're going to do it completely different. You're going to set up structures and business. You're going to have uh, agents or uh, clients calling you saying, come list me, come list me, come list me. See, that doesn't happen either for most people. We get a few referrals, but I'm talking about like masses, like you're doing 40, 50, 60 million dollars a year. And if that's not your goal, that's okay. That's all right. You don't have to leave. It's just whatever your goal is, how do we get there faster, easier and have people calling you? How many would like that? They're calling you. Yes or yes? Yes. So it comes right down to it in the end that we're used to chasing deals, we're chasing clients, we're chasing things, and I wanna, I wanna have you stop. I want them chasing you. See, what's interesting is Nike doesn't call you on the phone and say, hey, we saw you running the other day. Those shoes are pathetic. You need to come and look at our new line. They don't do that. But when you think about athletic shoes and needing a pair, you're predisposed, especially if you live in this area called Oregon, predisposed that when you walk into the store, you might be looking at Nike. You get that? So it wasn't that they sold you, they marketed to you. So what if you built your entire business around marketing? Wouldn't that be incredible? What if they knew you? That's why I recommended Russell Brunson because Russell's a big guy on how do we get people volunteering, raising their hands going, no, sell me. Here, list me, get me. But that's not the way we think. We're so busy chasing the deal and getting the next transaction. So get out of the transactional mindset. So this is where we really want to take you. I want you to have a business that you love and, and a life that's back, okay? Get your life back. But what I also said to you earlier, and I said this in flippantly, but the reality is today I think you either have to change the way you're doing things or you're not going to make it. I think you're in a place where it's pretty scary to see what's going on because I think change or die is not just a, a phrase. By the way, that was an article. That was, a, that was an article I pulled from... That was an article I pulled from uh, Fast Company magazine. And basically it was talking about like, you either change in business today, if your ways are old, you're dying. And I'm gonna tell you, most realtors aren't even looking at what they're doing. I had a friend of mine who runs a big operation. They're doing about $80 million this year. And he was doing their annual planning session. And he said, you got any suggestions? I said, ask your team this one question. This was not part of today. I had no intention of saying this, but take this with you. I said to him, Ask them, if we wanted to beat us, how would we beat us? How would we dismantle 
our team. We're big, we're bad, we own it, everybody knows us. But if we were them, how would we take ourselves apart? And I said, if you don't go to that place where you are taking yourself apart, somebody else will figure that out. You won't be here long. I said, I don't care how big you are, Michael. He said, no, I get it. Totally, I get it. So this is what I'm going to, let's see, looking backwards. Yeah, looking backwards, go forwards. Yes, absolutely. So let's talk about 2019. Let's get on with some, some stuff. Is this making sense? I mean, just mentally, or is this making sense? Yes or yes? Yes. Are you with me still? Because you, you seem, some of you are either stunned or you're agitated because I said you're going to die if you don't change or <laughs> something. Something pissed you off because it's not, it doesn't look good right this second. You guys are... <laughs> Something's happening. You, you turned on me. There's something going on. 2019, just I want you to write down some of the answers. You may not know all of these, but if you want to take a picture of it, it's not a bad picture to take with you. It'd be a great thing to do. By the way, I'm not going to offer the PowerPoint for this because this is a product we're going to be offering, but I am going to give you the tools that I offer you in the presentation, and I'm going to offer to give all those to you, and I'll tell you how to get them. But things like this, I'd like you to take pictures because I want to make sure that when you get home today, and by the way, hope today on a Wednesday is just the beginning of a lot of thinking that's going to take you like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, maybe into, into the weekend planning because the faster you plan this, the more effective you're going to be at finishing this year strong, starting next year on, with a bang. I mean, this is the time. For my coaching clients, typically most of my coaching clients, we've been doing this, this exercise, we've been doing these things since October. So you, you're already a little late but you got time to catch up, right? This is, it's not too late. So how much money did you, have you made this year? By the way, I'm gonna tell you, if you don't know the answer to that, you should always know. You should know at all points. You should just know. You should be on track with your P&L such that you know, just like any business owner would know. I know how much our revenues are, right? Next thing, transactions closed. How many transactions have you closed? I ask people all the time. I mean, how many deals have you done? I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm probably between four and six million. I'm, I don't know, maybe 20 to 35 deals, something like that. I'm like, how do you plan your budgeting? I mean, how do you do business that way? It's like, how do you do that? Uh, total listings taken, big deal. Buyer sales, how many buyer sales? Knowing the ratio between buyers and sellers is a big deal. You want to make sure that you know the ratio. By the way, how many of you would like to have more of your business go towards listings, less of it towards buyers? Raise your hands. Some of you aren't raising your hands for that, so I'm just suggesting one of two things is true. One, you're either, how many would like to have more buyers than, than sell, sales or listings? Okay, so some of you didn't raise your hand for that either. So that means, how many aren't going to raise your hands no matter what I ask? <laughs> Got it. That's why I didn't let you in the side door. You could have come in, but no, you're not raising your hands. So I left you out there on the street, your ass freezing cold out there, just said, <laughs> Tough. Total hours prospecting. Now, I'm not a big believer in prospecting, but at some point you got to call somebody. It, it, it is a contact sport. You got to call somebody. So then I'm over here on this side. By the way, I'm a bigger marketer fan. Let them call you. I'm a big fan of that, but you do have to still call people. You still got leads to follow up. You still have referrals to follow up. You still got to call people. Or on the other side, we got total hours executing marketing strategy. Yeah, that's a good one. How many hours are you totally? By the way, in 1986, when we started Hobbs Herder Advertising, which seems like ancient history, it certainly is, we were talking about you need to become a marketer. You need to think like a marketer. You need to stop thinking like a realtor. Start thinking like a marketer. Amy, you said that more than a, a, a thousand times or so, right, in your life speaking with us. And one thing that I will tell you is today I'm going to change it to say today you've got to become a media company. You've got to start thinking like a media company because we have so many different mediums to work in but what we have to do is escalate ourselves from how do I get the next deal? That's, that's a fact. Then we talk about total listing appointments. What I would love to have is for you to know exactly how many you've done, but more importantly, how many you won versus didn't win, right? That's a big, big deal. Total listings sold, which means you're getting them at the right price, average sales price, pendings, present pendings. Tells you where you are right now and where you're going to finish out the year because we're, we're closing in on that. And then finally, these last couple numbers, which is business days not at work. Business day is not at work. So in other words, Monday through Friday, not at work, or Monday through Saturday, whatever your business days are, you're going to be the dictator, not me. But I'd love to know how many business days you didn't work, meaning how many days you take off. And I'm going to give you a formula later that's going to blow your mind. You're going to love me so much. No matter what you're thinking right now, you're going to love me at that point. 
And average contacts made per week will be a big number for sure, right? You've got to know that. Okay, so here's the 2019 in review. This is going to be a big part of it. So to achieve my 2020 goals, what new activities or actions do I have to take? So to go from where I was in 19, where I'm finishing in 19, what has to change? What do I have to do differently in 2020? So I'm going to make this first part. We're going to have a little bit of workshop, and I'm going to make sure that you guys get to weigh in on some of this for yourself. Don't just take notes like a seminar. Write down the stuff, because what are you going to do differently in 2020? What's going to make the, the difference in income? What's going to make the difference in, in more time, more happening faster, so I work less but make more? All in favor of that one, say aye. Aye. What's going to make the difference? What did I do best this year, by the way? What did I do best this year? What worked in 2019? And of course, that last question is really, really important too, because then it's a matter of what did I do that did not work? I can rewrite my whole script right now. I can look back, reflect back, and before it gets into 2020 and I do rinse and repeat and do exactly the same thing, get to the end of 20 going, you know what? I just didn't have the year I was expecting. We can actually fix that right now. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, a long time, I won't say client, but he came to a bunch of my seminars way back in the day, um, last week or the week before last, week before last. And he sa I said, how's your year been? He said, it's been tough. I said, Dude, how is it that you get to November and go, it's been a tough year? How did you not think of that earlier? Like to have a, a bad year is like 365 bad days. Like you, you'd catch it somewhere along the way, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you just like at the end of January go, you know, I'm a little off track. Let's get fixed up. Or by the end of February, you're going, hey, Mayday, Mayday, we've gone through one sixth of the year and I'm not on track now. Wouldn't that be a good time to fix it? How do you get to October, November and go, yeah, it didn't work out. So I want you guys to really do some self-assessment here and start to really figure out what it's going to take to make the big difference because the, 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 the truth is it's going to be exactly in 2020 as it was in 2019, exactly the same except for the changes you make. So let's talk about vision because for everything that's going to have to change, the first thing that needs to shift is your vision. What is your vision for yourself, for your business, for your life? What's your vision? What is the vision that you hold that, and by the way, I, I put these three people to remind me. I was thinking of this because I, I say this all the time to realtors and sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't realize that I'm talking about them, but there's three kinds of people. Those who make things happen, those who watch things happen, and those who wonder what happened. <laughs> Can you tell me which is which here? Because they're definitely... This dude with the coffee cup's like, I don't know what's going on. I'm, like, he's like watching things happen back there and she's like all in, right? She's, she's making stuff happen. She's let's, let's go. But this is the personalities of people, right? This is where people get lost. So we've got to start figuring out what is it going to take? And what Jim said to me, you know, years and years and years ago, I have so many of his quotes, so many things. Jim Rohn was such an amazing part of my life. I have journals, like years and years worth of journals. I was with him eight years. I was the president of his company from 84 to 86 and what, a, what an incredible journey that was. But things like this, right, that where he says success is neither magical nor mysterious. In the end, success is a natural consequence of consistently applying the basic fundamentals. It's not, a, it's not secret. It's not hard. It's just like doing the stuff that works and then doing it again and again and again. And yet for most of us, we do it once or twice and we're like, hey, that worked. Hey, I'm not going to do it again, but it worked. Hey. <laughs> So get a crystal clear picture. This is really the, the key for each of you right now is get a crystal clear picture, easy for you to say, a crystal clear picture of what you want. What do you want life to look like? What do you want it to be? Because in the end, and I said this to you earlier, if we start with the end in mind, if we start with over there in mind, it might be really good, good to get crystal clear. Like what, how far out can you see? Some people are really good at like long-term can't see short-term very well. Some people are really good at short-term, can't see long-term very well. It's very fuzzy. How far can you see? But as far as you can see, will you do me a favor and just take it out? Take it out there and start writing some notes to yourself right now. I want you to go as far as you can see and go like, what, 10 years? Can, can you go that far? Can you go 15 years? What do you want life to look like? What's the vision for it? 
Where will you be? Who will you be around? How will life be? Will you be slowing down? Will you be, you know, with your walker showing another kitchen? What, 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 what's, what's it going to look like when you're, <laughs> like, what's the vision for your life, business, all of that? Go as far as you can see, because it may not be more than three or four years for you. Some people just have a really hard time. What is it that you see? What is it you think would be the, the vision of your life? What are you doing? Who are you around? What kinds of things are you doing? What do you wish you had more time for that by then certainly you'd have time for it, right? What kinds of things do you see for your life? Who have you met? Who do you hang around with? If we're the culmination and the average of the five people that, you know, that we hang around with most, who are you hanging around with then? <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Rick. I appreciate you. We're hanging around with you too. Yeah, so what else? What else can you think of? Like, you know, the relationship, the, the vacations, the travel, the what what can you see? And if you're not visual and you don't see it, talk to yourself about it. Tell yourself the story. What does your life look like? What's what's the vision? Vision is a visual word, so it's hard to describe all of it, but if you can, describe it all right? How does it feel to be you in five years, 10 years, 15 years? I like that, Jane. Closing your eyes, visualizing. What does it look like? Yeah, close your eyes. It's okay. Really think, what does it look like? Are you married? <laughs> <laughs> we're live somewhere. <laughs> we were live some, somewhere. It's awesome. Hey, Brad, do we, where's Brad? Do we have a hashtag? We want him to do Master Agent Club? Oh. Yeah, yeah masteragentclub.com. So all your notes, all your pictures, all the stuff you guys have taken. So do some big, some inner search, but here's the big key, and this is where I want to walk you down because I want to get you as far as you can right now. I'm about to take you on a journey so we go bigger, we go bigger, we go bigger. And come back, leave these pages, like leave a page or two and then let's flip ahead because I want to give you some, some more insight. I want to have you start thinking bigger because how many realize that right now it's hard to see any further than you can see doesn't mean that there isn't more beyond that. How many, can, how many know that's true? So if you're in an airplane, like we flew yesterday from, from uh, where do we live? Austin. Uh, we flew from Austin. We flew from Dallas, actually, the connection, but we flew from Dallas. And so on the way here, if we were in the cockpit, they used to allow that, right? In the old days, I, I, used to, I got to fly because I was such a frequent flyer with American. They put me up front. How cool is that? But not anymore. So if you were in the cockpit and you're looking, how far can you see? And the answer is whatever the horizon is. But when you go another 100 miles, how far can you see? Further, right? But still the horizon. It's the same distance, just I can see more because I'm there now. And I go another two hours and I look again and it's like, I can see further. I can only see the same horizon, but it's further. Sometimes you can't see further until you get further down the road, right? So just give yourself a break and know that most of it though is in our thinking. We can't allow ourselves to think that big. And I'll tell you what, we're not sitting with a bunch of kids in, in school here where they believe they're singers and they're artists and they just believe everything. I'm great at everything. We're sitting a bunch of, uh, amongst a bunch of adults who have proven them to themselves and, and reproven to themselves that they're not good at a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we say that to ourselves all the time. No, nah, I'm not really good at that. I've never, no, nah, I've never been good at that. It's just the way I am. And I don't believe that's true. So what I would say is in the next uh, short little while here, the next couple hours, at least is open up some of the, the gates and be open to the possibility that you are bigger than you know because you forgot how big you really are. Somewhere in there you get disappointed. Somewhere in there somebody told you something that you bought. By the way, for some of you, uh, some of us, we're old enough to, the, the, the tapes are like freaking eight track tapes are so old, yet we're still trying to play them, right? We're still looking for the, just get me one more eight track deck that I can play them so I can listen to those tapes one more time. So stop it. So let's talk, let's talk about what this is all about. Let's start with the end in mind. Yes, let's go to the end. And then let's look forward so we can look back. We're going to go look all the way forward so we can look back and see what it's like. It's like going into the future, 
you know, 10 years and then getting in a rocking chair and reflecting back on what it was that I did that got me to this point. It's a cool exercise, right? So I want you to go forward as far as you can see. And then I want you to look back to this 2020 vision because from the future, looking back, having 2020 vision is not that hard. How many of you are really good at seeing the past as clearly as can be? I can see the mistake I made. I can see the stuff I did. I know exactly what I could have done differently. You're brilliant looking back. So let's go into the future and let's look back and figure out how to make that work for you. And then from the, re from the future, let's reverse engineer your perfect 2020 vision. All right, so here's the deal. Once you have the clarity about your vision, setting goals becomes the next part because vision's a big picture. Vision is, is more philosophical. Vision often has to do with the big life issues, like what, you know, it's almost my, my big picture. Why am I even here? What's my purpose is related to vision. But goals are related much more to things and, and places and people. So I want to take you through purpose because purpose is so related to these things. I want to give you a chance to write down your purpose, to figure out what your purpose is. Why are you here? I don't mean at Bloodworks. I don't mean here today. I mean, why are you here? Why are you here on the planet? Why are you here in real estate? Why are you here? So let's start with this. I want you to write down five things you would do for free. You love them so much. There's five things that I would do even if nobody paid me. For me, I'm going to tell you, I've done plenty of speaking. I've gone to coaching groups and I've, I've trained and trained and trained a lot of it for free. Why? Because I can, because I love it so much. I love to share, love to teach, love to help people. I will love watching lights go on in their eyes. I love that. So it's one of my passions. One of my, it's part of my purpose. So what is it for you? Like what lights your wick? What is it? You, and by the way, sometimes it's stuff we used to do and then we had to like get a job. <laughs> I love music. I love music. And then I had to get a job. I love photography. Oh my gosh, I just love photography. And then somebody said I couldn't make a living doing it, so I had to get a job. Like how many things did we give up at some point in our lives because we had to get to be an adult? Anybody relate? We've got kids. We've got to be practical. I've got a family. I got to get, you know, got to just bear down and get a job. Give my life up. So there's five. The second five things is, I want you to think about five things you would love to change in yourself, mainly in the world. This is a chance for you to be kind of like a Miss America. World peace. <laughs> five things you'd like to see changed in yourself, others, or the world. And I can tell you, changing others is hard. Mm -hmm. Just hard. Huh, babe? <laughs> She's like, if only you'd change. <laughs> what would you change in yourself and in the world? Because others is tough. Honestly, it's just really tough. You can influence, but it's hard to change somebody. They can't change. They won't change until you until they want to change. So what you can do is you can influence change. Mostly, you can change yourself, and when you change, it starts to change. Does that relate to anybody? Anybody feel like that's true? Yeah. When you start to change, things change around you. And I had a friend that says, what do you think the world revolves around you? I said, kind of. It's not that way exactly, but kind of, because what happens is when you start to change, the interaction with the world becomes different. Therefore, it changes. So there is an element to that phrase, what do you think the world revolves around you? Kind of, yeah, sort of. It's a little philosophical, but it's true. I had a very angry partner, very angry partner. And I had no idea how angry I was inside. And then I started healing my anger and he was, all of a sudden he wasn't angry anymore. I was like, well, how'd that work out? Maybe it wasn't him at all. It could have been me. 
Who is it? The, who is it? The the uh, what do they call it? The axle of the wheel of all this garbage that's going on, right? I was. All right, what do you got? You got five? You got five and five? Okay, so your, your homework assignment, one of the things that you really want to do is get clear about your purpose. Where are you going to find it? In those 10 things. You're probably going to find it in those 10 things. Not all 10 of them are your purpose, but in there somewhere is going to be a clue. It's going to take you a direction. It's going to go, you know what? There might be something right here. So I just want you to get the five and the five down, go home and start working on what is my purpose? What would be the big picture of that? Okay, so then we got this thing called what is success? So write that down. What is success? What is success? Anybody? I'm open to all your ideas. What's success? Because for each one of you, it's going to be different anyway. So you're, I'm not talking about what, what did Webster's call it. I'm saying what is success for you? Loving what I do. Yes, right here. Being nine years old and having no regrets. Being nine years old or 90? 90. 90. <laughs> I was like, nine. at nine, they hardly have any regrets, right? But that's good. 90 and not having any regrets. Love that. Cassie? Wasn't it you that said something? Yeah, I just said um, being passionate and loving what you, what you do. Being passionate and loving what you do. I love that. Wouldn't that be great if your, your vocation was just so pleasurable, it was almost like, I'm on vacation. I just love what I do. Yeah, that's cool. That's wonderful. That's great. Yes? Financial freedom. Financial freedom. I love that. So freedom is a big deal, and financial freedom is, is one of those. And by the way, most often people don't worry about finances after they have it. So it's usually, you know, we're trying to get free so we can someday not have to think about that anymore, right? Because it's really not a big deal. It's just, it's only a big deal when we're focused on it. And when we went through, uh, so many of us, we were talking about it last night. We went through the crash in 2008, 9, 10. I'm not sure where you came out on that when many, many fortunes were m just completely messed up. It changed a lot of lives financially speaking, put a lot of people back on course to say, oh my gosh, I got to go back and figure it out again. I told you I was retired, right? I was done. I wasn't done. I was only 50 or something like that. But it was like, I, I kind of washed my hands away. I don't need to do this anymore. And then all of a sudden I had to do this some more. <laughs> you know, it was like, it didn't, didn't work out that way. What is success? Come on, a couple more. Quick. Yes, in the back. Preston. Love that. Being present with my family and friend in my uh, family and friends' lives. Love that. And next to you, there's somebody else. Yes. Moving the needle a little more each day towards my goals. Love that. We'll come back to it. But yes, absolutely love that. Carlos, did you say something? Living out your purpose. Living out your purpose. Now, see, if you were living through your purpose, how many think you would feel more fulfilled? Yeah. Because what's really interesting is we do what we do, but we don't ever link that to like joy and happiness and success. So we just do what we do because that's the track we chose. If we could really see, see it through our purpose and we go, this is either it is my purpose or it's moving me towards affording my purpose. Like if I want to give big bucks, great, then I need to amass a fortune that I can give away, right? So what am I going to do to make that happen? So what is success? Here's what I think success is. Write this down because this is really the key. Success is getting what you want. Success is getting what you want. That's why there could be, we could have had every person write down a definition. We probably wouldn't have seen exactly the same one for anybody. We would have had a hundred or whatever this crowd is, different success rules. But what we do know is for you to be successful, you have to get what you want. And what I'm going to suggest to you is this, that if you really want to become successful and you want to get what you want, what's the one missing thing that you don't know? So you got to know what you want. You got to know what you want, Rick. Good call. <laughs> you got to know what you want. Oh yeah, if I had that, I would be awesome. Do you know what that is for you? No, I have no idea. Well, <laughs> kind of sucks to be you right now. So we better start figuring out how do we get to know what we want? Because here's what I'm clear about. Absolutely, if you want to change the future... The easiest way to change the future is to design it. Really hard to change the future if you don't control it and design it. And I say control it. I mean, there's an element to going with the flow and allowing things to happen in a big way. But the reality is we're still very involved, very engaged in it. So here's a couple things that I wanted to give you. Bradley, I'm not wired with the sound of my coat or anything, right? I'm good. We're in Las Vegas and we're filming this thing. We're shooting this deal, and, uh, and Bradley suggested me something I never do. I usually put the mic here, 
And he says, put it on the lapel. I'm like, put it on the lapel. No big deal, except when you take your coat off, there goes the microphone. So I get done, I'm like, that was awesome. I was so fired up, like, so good. He's like, yeah, we didn't get any of it. <laughs> nice. He said, you took your jacket off, like, within six minutes, and it was over. So anyway, so here's the deal. I want you to, to take this down. I really want you to get this last part, but let's talk about it. Because how long, here, let me get my own, my own deal here. How long would, it, uh, how long would you like to, to take before you're not in production anymore? Like, how long would it... Would you like to go before you can get out of production and have a business that's fully functioning without you? How long do you plan to, to live in this great life, uh, this great life after getting out of production? Like how long is that gonna be? Like you're gonna, let's say retire, I hate the word retirement, but let's say retire, you're gonna retire, how long will you live past that retirement? Statistically speaking, about three years, but I'm not asking for stats, I'm saying how long will you be? That's because most people in the stats are working a job they hate, and when they retire, they have nothing still to go, and so they just pass, right? But if you were doing production, and you were building this huge real estate business, and you were really good at it, and you really loved it, and you got out of production because you'd gotten into a place where you could, they could do it, and you could totally manage a system and a team, and if you went to Jerusalem for 14 days, you came back, business is going, booming, whatever. My friend Ron Kubek used to leave on December 6th every year, December 5th, 6th every year, and he'd go to Hawaii, he'd come back on January 5th, 6th, 7th, in that range, and every year he'd call me with the great report. Yeah, it took 36 listings and 27 sales while I was gone. Yep, took you know 14 listings and 32 sales while I was gone. Amy, you remember this guy, right? right. Happened every year. Had a great time when he was gone because it, it, it didn't require him. People would call and say, hey, we want Ron to come out and list our property. Ron's out of town, we'll send somebody out right away. And they'd go out and take the listings and boom, Ron wasn't there. But it doesn't matter. When Ron retired, by the way, they didn't care. Ron was still operating. His business was going, right? Didn't matter. So I want you to go down to this next part, which is how much do you have to make each year to save after taxes and expenses the number that leads to your vision of your great life? Wow, that's an interesting question. If you weren't lost in just the day or lost in just the week or lost in just 2019, wouldn't that be an interesting question to answer? How much money do you actually have to make? And after all expenses, after all things, after all taxes, after everything, how much has to be left over so you could actually begin to enjoy the lifestyle that you intend? Not living on Social Security, which may or may not be around. For, for 40 years, they've been telling us, Social Security ain't going to be here when you get old. I'm like, it's still here. I mean, it's still here. But who wants to live on it, right? Who wants? You, you can't. I mean, it's not going to happen. So if you really wanted to do that, how long would it be? How long would you give it? And then I want to point to something. My, my friend Gary Keller, and I say my friend, I say that loosely, um, we, we, we have been very good friends in our lives. Right now, we're not enjoying each other much. Uh, we have different opinions on something. But, but let's just say he's brilliant at what he does. And I'm going to say that in a book that he wrote, anybody remember the, the red book that he wrote called Millionaire Real Estate Agent? There was this part where we talked about three levels of, of your business, which is one, selling a million. And I remember, I go back long enough, some of you won't relate to this, some of you don't know that at one time, the million dollar club was a big deal. You got in the million dollar club, I don't mean you made a million. You sold a million dollars. Oh my gosh. We gave them plaques and awards and marched them across stages and went, you're in the million dollar club. You've made $22,000 and you're on welfare, but you made the million dollar club. You're in. Anyway, fortunately for us, we're not celebrating too many people doing a million dollars in sales anymore, but we do have a lot of people that are moving towards making a million and of course, then the, the one that's really kind of cool is that netting a million, right? If once you get past you know, all the expenses, all in, after all things, I netted a million bucks. Who would like to be there? Who would like to be there? So there's one more I want to push you on. I was having a great philosophical conversation with a guy, uh, one of my fly fishing buddies one day, and I said, how much money would you have to have so you could stroke one of those big million dollar checks and just give it freely? And, and how big would your thinking have to be to allow yourself to do that? Because having it isn't the answer. There are many people, no matter how much they have, it's not yet still enough. That's inside, right? That's here, that's here. So how much would you have to have? 
How much would it have to be? How much would you have to be making? What would it take for you to be able to go, you know what, given seven figures, they deserve it, they really need it, it would make a big difference in those people's lives, boom. How many would love to be in a position to do that? How many can think of a worthy cause that would, that would be worth you doing that with? Raise your hands. So how many would love to help me and, and work with me on getting you to this point so we could have a whole lot of stories about people doing that? Because I think that should be one of the, uh, Bradley, I think that should be one of the things we talk about at Master Agent Club. We should be pushing that. We should be figuring out how to get people to be able to get so wealthy that they give a million bucks. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Who wants to be one of them? Aye. There you go. So let's start pulling this thing down and we're gonna take the purpose, we're gonna take it into next level. Let, let's, let's step it down into goals, goals. We gotta get into goals. So purpose leads to goals. I'm giving you a wheel of life. This is um, seven pie pieces. You can take a picture, you can write the seven, doesn't matter to me which way you handle it. I want you to get the seven. I want you to rate yourself in each of these. If you're doing it as a pie chart, and you can, you know, don't worry if you get close to seven equal pieces, it's just, just get the idea, okay? So number one is spirituality. We are, we are spiritual beings, but we're having a physical experience. I always tell my, my spiritual friends who are, sometimes they get a little woo-woo, and I'm like, but dude, you chose to come here. You're, you're like here on the planet. You gotta still live here. I know you're, you know, waiting for the future, but I'm telling you, right now you're here, so let's make the best of it. Let's really go for it, okay? So spiritual, but in the spiritual realm, what does that mean to you and whatever your beliefs are, are you living those? And if you're gonna rate yourself, you could just take a little piece of that pie piece and you could color it in and go, yeah, I think I'm about a six out of 10 and just color that in in pen. Spirituality is where it all starts. Then health, because if you don't have health, it kind of sucks. I'm gonna be 105 when I die, but I'm gonna die in perfect health. All right, not perfect health, because I wouldn't be dead if I was in perfect health, but I'm going to die healthy. What I don't want to do is like die at 105, but from 80 on, just be sicker than a dog. That would be miserable. Just shoot me. I may shoot myself. I don't know. I just would hate that, right? Like I, I want to be in good shape. I want to be in healthy condition. I want to be living vitally. I want to be able to play golf at 90 and shoot my score, my, you know, my age and my score. Like, wouldn't that be cool to shoot a 90 at 90? Be freaking awesome. I can't shoot it now, but I mean, just saying. But health is a big deal, right? So what are you eating and how are you treating yourself and are you working out? I told Shireen, we're staying with them, and I, I said, I was coming here and I was like, I brought my clothes to work out, but I was like, where am I gonna work out? How am I gonna do that? And I, we're staying in, in their gym, basically. We're living in their gym. They're, they have a gym in their, in their basement area and they got a beautiful bedroom there for us and there's the gym. I walk out of the bedroom and into the gym. Asked and received, right? Uh, personal. Personal has to do with, uh, by the way, personal, write this down. Personal has to do with uh, your personal growth and personal has to do with, um, personal growth would be like your relationship to yourself. So personal is not personal like in family. That's uh, key relationships, which is upside down, but next. So personal is your relationship with yourself. What's your self-talk, what's your self-belief, what's your self. So self is um, personal growth. And by the way, hobbies, hobbies. There's the one, by the way, that many people in real estate say, you know, I used to love to water ski, but I don't have any time anymore because I'm in real estate. I used to love to, you know, fly fish, but now I don't do that anymore because I, I don't have any time. I'm in real estate. Remember, you got in for more time and more money. And then what happened? So I want you to really get clear about that. And then, of course, relationships, key relationships, big part, key relationships, color in the part. Where are you on a scale of one to 10 in relationships? Where are you in relation to your job? What's the difference between job and business? What's the difference between job and business? Every one of you that even owns a business, even if we say you as a realtor, you own your own business, you still have a job. What's the job? The activities, whoever said that, it's the daily doings. It's the daily stuff that you have to do in that. When you're in your business, you're working on the 30,000 foot view. You're working, as we like to say, on the business. When you're in it, you're doing the daily doings. You're in the job, right? You're in the job. You're out with a listing presentation. You're out, you know, 
holding an open house. That's the job. The business is the view, the 30,000 foot view. By the way, notice the last one was money. The seventh one was money. And if you believe, as I believe, that we are in a cause and effect world, how many actually believe that that's true? Cause and effect. I'm not, I'm not saying this uh, with no spirituality or God in mind, but how many believe that you do need to create your own experience? Yes. I mean, clearly we have a, a maker, a creator that's kind of involved with the whole thing. And yet at the same time, the question is, if you don't get involved, is it going to happen for you? And the answer is no. That's not the way it works. So what we do know is this. In a cause and effect world, you are the cause. All four on this right-hand side are all about the cause, you. If you take care of your connection to God, if you take care of your health, you take care of your relationship to self, your health, mental health, you take care of that, and you take care of your key relationships, how do you feel when you get to your job how do you feel when you're running your business? And what do you think, by the way, why do you think money is a, uh, a result of having that be in great form? Am I rambling? No. No. I feel like a crazed maniac sometimes because <laughs> you guys are looking at me like, what? So what if all these things were in line when you got over here on this side of the line how is my day going to go? How much more productive will I be? How much more money will I earn if all that's in alignment? More. So we have another choice. We could wake up in the morning and instead of thinking, wow, I got to take care of my spirituality, health, personal and relationship, I think I'm going to take a left turn and go, today I got to get up and make some money. How's that going to work out? It's not. So what I'm telling you is the way that this goes is this way, clockwise, not counterclockwise. You don't get to go, wow, I'm going to go make some money. I got to get my work. I got to get to my work. And so for those of us that get lost in our work a lot, it's, it's easy to see why that doesn't help you as much as stepping back and saying, let me take care of the things that really matter and put that in alignment with, and it starts to pan out well. So when we're talking about goals, I want you to shoot for the moon. And I just said a few minutes ago, the challenge with adults is we've proven to ourselves that sometimes we've said it goals for ourselves that we didn't achieve. Anybody here ever missed a goal? Besides me, I'm, I'm raising my hand right there with you. How discouraging is that? I set my sights on this and then I completely whiffed. I mean, I just missed it entirely. Yep. Disappointing, right? And then we go, you know what? Maybe I won't even set my goals this year. And we start to pull ourselves down instead of raising ourselves up because we don't want to be disappointed. We don't want to, we don't want to have to have that experience. And so what we do instead is we shoot low. So here's where I want to take you. I've got three things that I want to give you real quickly. Number one, set goals that inspire you. But here's the key. Your past will try and talk you out of it. It's not others. Others will too sometimes, which then comes back to the question, which is, what are the five people you're hanging around with and all that different set of questions. But very often, you don't need others to be pulled backwards. You're, you'll do it to yourself. It's a self-managed you know, self, uh, job. The past will attempt, attempt to shrink you. And what happens is we get into the place where we're in our comfort zones and we're just living there. And we're like, no, you don't understand. My life is like this. And you don't understand. I'm, I'm 50 or I'm 40 or I'm 38. And I, you know, you don't understand. It's like, no, I do. I, I get that you're disappointed. I get that it's been hard. And I get that you're still bigger than you know. And you've let yourself play small. And so by the time we're done today, you're going to see how big you could be. But where it all happens is outside of your comfort zones. Yes? It's going to happen outside of that stuff. When you're not comfortable is where it's going to really happen. When you're in it, you're like, you can't see the forest for the trees. The second one is this idea about shooting high even if you miss. And I will tell you, I've had some big thinkers in my life. Tony Robbins is one of those. He just, like, he just never stops. He's like, a, he's like the Terminator on goals and stuff. He just, just like whatever he wants done, he's going to make it happen. I told him we just got back from his uh, uh, unlimited power thing and I left him, uh, we voice text back and forth and I left him a message. I said, dude, I, you know, I've seen your program so many times. But I said, I, I'm never without mouth drop awe at how committed to mastery you are. 
Like I've never seen a human being just drive, 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 not for success, not for money, for, for mastery. Like he just wants to be the very best at whatever he does. He played polo for a little while and became exceptional. Played golf for a while, became exceptional. Like he just gets in and goes, I'm gonna really get it. Most of us don't do that. We dabble in everything. Dabble, dabble, dabble. Right? We're just mediocre. So shoot high. Even if you miss, like go for it. And then the third one says, if you shoot high enough for it, you will never hit a goal. My friend named Keller, he said to me one day, he said, Don, I've never hit a goal. I said, that's BS, Gary. I said, that's not true. He said, no, literally, I've never hit a goal because every time I get close to where I can see I'm about to surpass a goal, I just, I just move it out. I just move it out. And I was like, seriously? He said, I've never achieved a goal in my life. I've always moved it out so that, I said, isn't that disappointing? He goes, no, it's just so stimulating, so motivating. It's like it's for him inspiring. For some people, it'd be, you know, they'd shoot themselves. But for him, it really works. It's like he just always sets it out. He says, I don't need to achieve a goal. Look at the fools in the football field that are, that are achieving a goal. They go across the goal line. They slam the ball down. They do all kinds of dances and they got all kinds of stuff and they're 21 points behind, you idiot. <laughs> right? So Jim Rohn said to me a long time ago that this is really the most important thing and that is don't set your, too, your goals too low because if you set your, lo your goals too low, it won't command you to do more. It won't demand more of you. It won't make you be bigger. It won't grow you. See, a lot of us get caught up in the fact we think that the goal is about the goal instead of the goal is just an excuse for us to make more of us. Does that make sense? This is not TV. We're on cameras, but this is not TV. You can talk to me. I'm right here. <laughs> Wendy, it's like, what's going on here? Shh. Be, very, be very quiet. Let's not have any fun. It's okay. So what I know is a bigger vision leads to bigger actions, bigger relationships, bigger habits, and bigger results. That's a great phrase. If you want to take something down, I would write that because that's, that's a big deal. But I want you to get a picture of this because I'm going to show you a process that I finally got. When I saw this, the very first time I saw this, which was only like six years ago, I mean, I've been doing this kind of stuff for years. I've been around the biggest minds in the world. And I saw this, this idea and I was like, oh my gosh, that, show, that describes exactly why what we've always said is true is true. So I want you to draw this X, Y axis and then put this, these two uh, descriptions, time and energy at the bottom, time and energy, time and effort, time and energy. Energy is, you know, put out, effort, right? And then this thinking line, this vision line. How big is my vision? How big is my thinking? Now, I want to ask you a question because this is really important that you're, that you're truthful with yourself, and that is, how many have ever set a goal to do something small? Like, if I, you know, if I could just do it kind of this way, it would be okay. You know, I could just, if I could just build a little thing, if I could just make it like a little bit, if we just have a little bit of a, how many have ever said words like that? Yes. Yeah. So if you set a small goal, let's say it's a business goal for, for now purposes of description, but it's, let's say it's a small goal. It's going to build a nice little business. I've even had people say that. You know, it's just my real estate business. I just want to have a nice little business. <laughs> okay, nice little business. So if I set a nice little business in mind and I put that goal out there, what kind of, what kind of energy am I going to give it? Like how inspiring is having a nice little business? If I was going to hire somebody to help me do it, who would I be looking for? Big talent or like pretty much anybody will do because I've just got this nice little business <laughs> idea in mind. Anybody will do. Doesn't make any difference because I'm just got this nice little vision. No big deal. On the other hand, what happens if I got this big, hairy, audacious, I was going to say hairy ass is what I was going to say, but I'm, I never cuss on stage, especially when I'm being filmed. Uh, so, so I think I just did. But, <laughs> but if I had this big, hairy, audacious goal, if I had this monster goal and I went, oh my gosh, this is like... I, I don't even know if I could ever get there. I'm not sure how I would ever do it. 
but it sure seems like it'd be freaking awesome to do that if I put that out there. Like we're gonna build the biggest ever. I've got a lender friend of mine, <coughs> social media genius, really love his stuff. And one of the things he said to me that really impressed the heck out of me, he said, I'm building a business that I want to be the first billion dollar loan officer business ever. I wanna do a billion dollars. And I was like, how cool is that that he even thinks like that? Because I know people have done 150, you know, and they're like, they're rock stars in their world. 200, oh my gosh, you're, you know, like you're amazing. He's like, no, I want to do a billion dollars in loans. Pretty cool, right? So then my question becomes, so what kind of action am I taking on that big, hairy, audacious goal? What does that inspire? Big action. Big action, big stuff. If I'm looking for helpers, if I'm looking for players, I'm looking for people to be in the game with me, who am I looking for? A players, Tony Robbins. I'm looking for big players. I'm looking for big people. I'm looking for people that, that play at a high level. I'm looking for people that I can't probably afford, but I want to paint a vision of what it is I'm doing because sometimes people join just for the cause, just to go, we did that. Like sometimes if I've got a big enough vision, I can get anybody. If I got a small business idea for this little, you know, kind of a, then nobody wants in. They don't want to be there when you flop. So I really, I, I don't know, how many know Carl's Jr., right? We have Carl's Jr. here, don't we? Yeah. Carl Jr.? Carl Karcher, does anybody know the story? Carl Karcher, he used to have like a little hot dog stand. I'm a Southern California boy. It was an Anaheim-based company, and Carl uh, Karcher had the little hot dog stand. He turned it into, you know, then a, a burger place, then a, a couple, and then a few, and then many, and then they ruled the world, right? They had bought Hardee's on the East Coast and all kinds of stuff, really fun stuff. Carl Karcher, do you think he was kind of a big business dude? Monster corporation, right? Huge corporation. I hired his assistant away from him. Did you ever meet her? I don't know if she was around Judy. Did you ever meet Judy? So Judy was an interesting lady because, and by the way, 1993, you weren't around. Yeah, I just remember when you came around versus when I was. 1993, in 1993, we hired Judy away from Carl Karcher. I hired her for $80,000 a year as my personal assistant. Now put all those things in perspective. 1993, first of all. Second of all, as a personal assistant, $80,000. There are many of those people right now not making $80,000. I paid her $80,000. You know why? Because I knew she had sat in the boardrooms with this guy and she'd been on the private planes with him, that she had ruled his, his kingdom for him when he was not around, that she was really running the business because that's what always happens in the end is they're always engaged and involved. And I thought I could buy that much smarts for 80 grand a year. How many think that's a pretty smart idea? We blew up. Like we took off. It was one of our, it was one of two times in our lives when we just really had another jump to the next level. And there's two parts to that. One is her knowledge helped. Second is our belief in ourselves jumped. Because when you start making commitments like that, when you start saying I'm all in like that, things change. You get that? Yes or yes? yes. So if you got a big, hairy, audacious goal, you're going to have a different thought process. You're going to put different energy. You're going to attract different people. You're looking for a different thing than if you're trying to build some little mamby-pamby whatever. So I want you to get really in on this thing. But here's the deal. This is what it really caught me because that's not a big deal. I've always said, hey, think bigger, think big. You just got to think big. Where's Justin? Where's the, my, my think, bigger, think bigger real estate guy back there somewhere? He's not here still. Okay, so you know who he is, oh, Justin Stoddard, right? Think bigger. So here we've got this line that goes about across this time and energy. So let's just do this. Take a line right here and draw it straight up. Just draw it straight up. Just draw that line straight up so that it intersects the small, weak, wimpy little actions that you were taking for the one business versus this whole other uh, spectrum of action and activity, and notice that this is true. It's the same day, week, month, year, or decade. It's the same amount of time and energy. energy. Whether I go for small or whether I go for big, it's the same exact amount of time and energy. That's the part. When I saw that, I went, oh my God. Honest to God, it was the first time I'd ever thought of that. I knew that it wasn't you know, it's not the hours you put in, it's what you put in the hours. I mean, I've said a thousand quirky things that everybody's heard. But the reality never struck me until I looked at that and went, wait a minute, that's exactly why. 
because it's not about how long you work, it's about how big your thinking is. Is your thinking small or is your thinking large? Because it's your thinking line, it's your vision for your life, it's your vision for your business, it's your vision for all this stuff. Cassie, am I late for something? No. Yes. She's keeping track of my time. It's my vision for stuff that, that says it's small or it's large. How many like this? So what does it mean to you? Tell me the translation. Think bigger. Think bigger. If you think bigger, bigger vision, bigger thinking leads to bigger actions. And bigger actions lead to bigger what? Results. And bigger results lead to what? What are you looking for when you're doing bigger results? What are you looking for? Bigger relationships. I'm looking for bigger people. I'm looking to play with bigger folks. I don't want to play with small people. I'll take care of them when I become so successful. I'll take care of them, but I'm not interested in do, doing business with them. And then I'm going to have bigger habits, by the way, which we're going to talk a lot about today. And then finally, we'll get to this thing called bigger results. So in the end, it's all about that. So let's talk about the next 12 months. We talked about the last 12 months. Let's talk about the next 12 months. So listen, this is not inspiring stuff, especially if it's hard for you to look at it. It's hard to look back and go, wow, I really screwed this year up. I didn't have a great year. It's hard to look back and see the mistakes we've made. But don't beat yourself up. Don't judge yourself. Look to the future now, knowing that you can totally control what you want. And I say totally control. You can. I mean, within reason, you've got great opportunity. Even in the downturn in 2008, 9, 10, I know people that had their best years in real estate. Absolutely. Some people actually saw through that and said, this is golden opportunity time. Other people said, wow, it's tragedy. It's horrible. I, what am I going to do except starve or lose everything I own? I'm not making fun. I was one of those, right? I, I, mean, I didn't lose everything I owned, but, but, but it was really a hard hit, right? It was big. So let's look down these things. And for the next 12 months, what do you see for your income? Where are you going to be in 12 months? 2020, 2020 vision. Now I'm looking back, what does 2020 represent for you? How much money did you actually bring in? What was your income? Name it, commit. I don't want to commit. Commit. What if I'm wrong? Commit. Call it, just call it. Declare it. How many listing appointments will you have during the whole year? By the way, how many listings would you have to take? Now, you might have to do a little math on some of this stuff, so some of it's going to take a little thinking. All right, in order to make a million dollars, if that's your goal, it's not my goal, it's your goal, in order to make a million dollars, in order to make a half million dollars, I got to do $17 million, give or take, in production, give or take, 15 to 18, depends on your splits, depends on your caps, all that stuff. But if, if I'm in there, 15 to $18 million, and I'm making about a half million dollars, that's great. How much of that at my average sales price of, your number here, 300,000, 200,000, 500,000, whatever it is, how many listings and sales will I need to take? What ratio do I want? More listings more, and less sales? More sales, less listings? I would suggest to you more, more listings and less sales. Probably will help you. How many closed deals do I need? How many listings taken? How many buyer sides do I want to close? How many buyers do I want to have? This is a big one right here. Average hours per week that I will actually work. And I want you to commit to that. <clears throat> and do me a favor and do yourself a favor. Don't shoot high, shoot low. What's the min minimum number of hours I could work to make that? Amy has, uh, and I have a mutual friend who is with me and uh, still with us in business today. Uh, her name is Rhonda Formby. Rhonda, uh, our staff, like Amy, used to go out on the road. They would leave on a Monday night and they would come back on Thursday night. They would travel. They would go sell tickets to seminars, fill rooms full of people, speak. Awesome at what she did. Rhonda was very good too. Rhonda uh, uh, was just extremely good at what she did. And she called me one day and she said, listen, I'm, I'm hitting my numbers but I really don't like being on the road three days a week. And she said, can I do it in two if I hit the same numbers? I said, well, yeah, I don't care what, how many days you're on the road. It doesn't matter. As long as you hit the numbers, it's fine. So right off the bat, she went from three days a week to two days a week. About six months later, seven months later, she said, hey, I've been working on this. I really think I can strategize where I can do everything I do, used to do in three days in one day. You, do you mind if I fly out on Monday and come back on Tuesday? If I fly out on Sunday, come back on Monday? I said, as long as you hit the numbers. 
you understand the thought behind that? It's not about the hours you're putting in. It's about doing the effective stuff, right? So what do I care if you're gone four days, eight days, 12 days, or one day, if you can get the job done, that's all we need. That's, what, that's the result we want. So when you're putting your hours down, I want you to put the hours, like go minimal, go lesser, not greater. Go not, I'm gonna work harder. I'm gonna pour into 2020. I'm gonna put in like 90 hours a week and see if I can kill myself in one year. <laughs> really go for being a high achiever. Total hours of prospecting, and I'm gonna include in that prospecting and marketing. In other words, how many hours are you shooting video? How many hours are you being a media company? How many hours are you calling clients? Like how many hours are you gonna be doing stuff that's really related to business uh, getting, bringing people to you? Okay, that's a big number. Number of days I will work this year, really important. I'm gonna tell you a story in just a few minutes. By the way, we may take a break here soon, but we might not. So if you feel the need to pee, just go ahead and do it. No, not here. Thank you for clarifying that. That was a, that was a bad call on my part. <laughs> Two minutes. Okay. Wendy, was that you that said that? <laughs> yeah, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> pee right here? No, not here. Okay, so we're going to take, we, we, we probably will take a short break, but it, it's going to be challenging because the bathrooms aren't big, and if you didn't notice, if you've been to them, it's not going to be like everybody's going to go and get right back. So if you got to go, go. Just do it. Okay, so, so that's 2020. We're starting to make plans for 2020, yes? Yeah. We want to get 2020 vision. All right. So what's it going to take? And this is one of my, this is one of my big drivers right now. It has been like my, my such huge awareness around momentum. How many of you like sports? Anybody watch sports, like sports? Name a team you like. Packers. That was a, a Packers. I heard that. Okay. What, 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 what was the rest of it? Seahawks. Seahawks. I've heard of them. Seahawks. You're in Oregon. I'm just surprised. That it's, okay. I guess it's the Northwest. Seahawks. What else? Who else do you like? Trailblazers. Yes. Yes, I can see that. Oregon Ducks. Anybody like, not like the Ducks? I bet I could start a war in here if I tried hard enough. I'll bet there's some people that like some other Oregon team. So here's my question. Did you ever notice how momentum works in sports? Yes. Did you ever see a swing of momentum? So I'm, I lived in Southern California for years and years, like most of my whole life. And I, was a, I had season tickets to the Lakers. I was there in some of their worst years, but I was also there through three championships with Kobe and Shaq and cool teams, right? If you liked them, if you were a Portland Trailblazer fans, it sucked to be you because <laughs> <coughs> we were kicking everybody's butt. But what's fun is the other day I was watching the Lakers and I don't really care anymore too much because I live in Texas and you know, I'm more like San Antonio fan now or you know, Rockets kind of are fun to watch. And, but what was exciting is the Lakers, this kind of young team except for LeBron, this kind of young team, they were behind by 12 points and I watched them climb back out of that into a win. And I thought that was pretty cool because I, I was noticing what the dynamics were. They were in, I think they were in Dallas. I forget where they were. They were somewhere out, they were gone and they came back and the crowd wasn't on their side. So what, how do you create your own momentum? See, it's different if you're in Staples Center and you hit a shot and the crowd goes crazy and then it impacts you. And then you come, you're high-fiving each other and you're belly bumping and you're doing all the fun stuff and you're patting each other on the ass and all that stuff. And then like you got, you start momentum, right? And the crowd's in it and then you're going like this. But if you're, if you're in a one person sport called real estate, how do you generate your own momentum? It's a little bit more like Serena, right? It's a great shot. She makes a great shot, yes! And she cranks it up and goes, I got it, I'm on a roll. And then another great shot, and then another great shot. And guess what? The crowd gets into it, because they, they don't want it to end early. They want to root for whoever's behind. And so the crowd gets into it and the momentum starts. How do you create your own momentum? How do you generate your momentum in your world? Let's talk about that because this is going to be one of the biggest things you're ever going to have to learn to do. This is part of why things don't go as well as you wish they would sometimes because what's very true in life is we all hit the skids from time to time. We all hit ruts. We all get into 
uh, low energy. We all will have those moments in time when we cannot pull ourselves out. I don't know what's with me. I just can't seem to get my act together. I don't know what's going on. I just can't seem to get the, the energy. Or by the way, we fake ourselves out. I can think of times when after the, the crash, the economic crash, you, if you'd asked me, I would have said, no, I'm on fire. I'm doing exactly the same stuff I was always doing. This is exactly how I always was. And yet when I climbed back out, I could look back and go, wow, you were really total low energy. I don't know how you even survived through that time. But if you're looking at yourself, you're just comparing yourself to self and you go, hey, look, I'm, I'm rocking it. But if you start comparing yourself to where you've been or other people around you and where they were next to you, you start to see. And I'm telling you that right now, one of the biggest things you're going to have to deal with in 2020 is this whole idea of creating momentum. Because if you really want things to be great, you're starting momentum right now. This is when it starts. We're not waiting till 2020. We're not waiting till January 6th. And I'll tell you one thing, if you were ever thinking about going to sleep during the holidays and relaxing, this is not the time to do it. Doesn't mean you can't have fun. It doesn't mean you can't enjoy the holidays. It just means now's not the time to go to sleep. This is the time to wake up. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes. say yes. yes. Give me, a, give me, a, in Texas we say, give me an amen on that. How do you build energy? How do you build energy? How do you create energy from scratch? Momentum comes and goes, slumps happen. Absolutely, you gotta discover how to create your own energy. You have to become energy machines. You have to become people who know how to manage your state. You have to know how to manage yourself and to create what you want. So I'm gonna give you a little exercise and we're gonna take, a, we'll take a break after this, okay? There's five pieces here that I want you to write. So write a lot of stuff here, take it all down, get this going, because this is momentum and these sheets that you're about to write are gonna be some of the secrets to you creating momentum, okay? These are gonna be your pieces. Number one, how do you expand your thoughts? I want you to write to yourself. How can I expand my thoughts? How can I think bigger? How can I create bigger thoughts than I've already had? How can I think big when I'm feeling small? How can I think big when, when times are tough? How can I create bigger thoughts? Because what did we just show you on the diagram? What we know is the left side there is all about our thinking line, right? Remember the diagram, the X, XY axis? It's our thinking that matters. So how do we change our thoughts and expand them to a higher degree than we've ever had? What things can you do? By the way, throw some out just so we can give everybody some ideas. What kinds of things can you do to expand your thoughts and your thinking? Surround yourself with bigger thinkers. That's one of the majors. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Find your why. Find your why is a great one, right? That's, that's a foundational piece. Daily gratitude. Daily gratitude. Absolutely. We're going to show you a little energy exercise around that. What else? Yeah. What's that? Meditate. Meditate. Another one. Great. Yes. Uh, surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Surrounding yourself with like-minded people. Bigger thinkers. Absolutely. People that are energized and moving in the same direction. What else? What else can you do? Where else can you get inspired? Where else can you get information? Read. Is that what you were going to say? No, I was going to say come to events like this. Good, good call. <laughs> come to all the Master Agent Club events. Coaching. Coaching. Absolutely. What do you think people have coaches for? You don't think they know how to do any of that stuff? Of course they do. The difference is they want somebody to help them stay on track because at their peak, they absolutely get better results. If you stayed, listen, if you're on course between Dallas, where we were yesterday morning, and Portland, if you're on course the whole time, that's the shortest distance, yes, between two points? Yes. So if we flew the shortest, straightest line between Dallas and Portland, we would get there the absolute fastest possible. Is that true? Assuming all speed was the same, right? right? So what's the truth about flying between there and here? The plane's vectoring from side to side. We're going around a storm. He called it out. We actually got the notice on the plane. He said, now we're going to go around the storm. And we don't know if it's going to be real bumpy, but everybody sit down and put your seatbelts on. And so we're going around and around and around and around and go like this. So what's true of your path? Is it between here and there or is it more like this? It's a lot like that, right? So what I want you to start doing is thinking about how do we put ourselves in a place where we are more often on track, more often in the moment, more often in line with where I'm going, how do we expand our thoughts? How do we think bigger? We read, we watch uh, podcasts, you attend classes, you, you get online and do courses with us. We're gonna give you some great stuff to watch. What else? How do you expand your energy? Okay, so let's start there, eat healthy. You're not making a list, by the way, of everybody else's, but I'm suggesting to you, these are some great things that you can do. 
Meditate, right, for energy. Sleep. What else? Exercise. Exercise. Absolutely. Yes. Say it again for me. Learning to give, being less intrinsic and more extrinsic. Absolutely. So giving is very energizing, right? The secret to living, real living is giving at its highest level. Yeah, absolutely. What else can you do? What's your list? Eating healthy, right foods, getting enough sleep, doing the right stuff. What else can you do to energize, to build energy? Have a mantra. Have a mantra. Yep. Have a mantra. Say with it. What's that? Take vacations, absolutely. You know, Tony Robbins has got a move. Have you ever seen his move? He's got one move where he goes down like this. He does it again and again and again. He's got some moves where he'll, he's clapping or he's doing whoa claps, right? That's all energy. All that stuff is on purpose. But have you ever seen, if you watch the movie that he did, which is called I'm Not Your Guru, if you ever watch, right before he comes through the curtain, on the back side, he does a spin move, which most people are not aware of, does it every single time. What do you think that does for him? Put, it's an anchor that puts him in peak energy. Yeah, he's anchored. So you want to set yourself up with an anchor that says, here's a place where I'm fired up. We used to do board breaking, right? Amy would put 1,000 yep. people through board breaking. He puts 1,000 people through, or 13,000 people through fire walking. It's energy. You, you clench your fist, you go, yes. And I remember because when I'm doing that, that time, it's telling me that next time I'm up against something, I can anchor that in. That's energy. Yes. How do you expand your relationships? What kinds of things can you do to expand your relationships? Make some notes. What kind of things can you do to expand your relationships? Be Just be present. Be present. Be authentic. Be Listen more. Listen more. Stay connected to the most important. Stay connected to the most important. To what's important to... In the relationship. Got it. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Yes. I get the intent behind that. I'm gonna, I was going to have a funny about it, but I'm not going to. Keep your commitment. Be vulnerable. Be vulnerable. Keep your commitment, somebody said. Good job. Cassie gets a gold star. <laughs> be part of networks of successful people with people going where you want to go. So I didn't hear the first part, but I think it was about networking with people that, you, that, are, that are going where you want to go. And so if you want a great relationship, you could hang out with people that have a great relationship, right? We need models. And by the way, any of these, you could do the same thing, right? Model. model. Model anybody who's got great energy, great thoughts, great... You can model anybody. How do you expand your time? How do you expand your time? What do you mean? We only get 24 hours. How do you expand your time? Say no, absolutely. You get other people to do it, absolutely. You what? Stop it. You stop time. Collapse time. Collapse time. That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Collapse time. What else? Time. Say what? Focus time. Focus. Yes, you focus in time. Make definitive decisions. Don't make, spin your wheels. Make decisions. Don't spin your wheels. Yes, ma'am. Set boundaries. Set boundaries. Absolutely. Delegate. Delegate. Put on For sure. Put on? Blind, blinders, blindfolds. Blinders, yeah. Yep, just so you can't see anything else. You're in it, you're, you know what you're doing, and that's all you can see. No distractions. Okay, so what else? Final one. How do you expand your money? Work harder. Have people work for you. Have people work for you. Leverage. Invest. Leverage. Stick to your budget. Stick to your budget. I don't know who you are, dude, but we got to talk. I like your answers. <laughs> What's your name? Chad. Chad, I like you. I like you too. <laughs> we'll have to talk, man. <laughs> How else can you expand your money? How else can you expand your money? Work smarter. Work smarter. What else? Give it away. Give it away. Interesting. Go giver. Go giver, exactly. Turn active income into passive income. Absolutely. There he is again. I like him. <laughs> Telling you that 
Chad is on fire. All right, so with those great thoughts, and by the way, take some of the stuff down that you just heard, make your list, really think about what, how do we expand? I'll leave these up on the screen. Let's take like the shortest, like the shortest. All I wanna do is just have like long enough for you guys to stretch your legs, but then get right back, okay? Well, let's like, like seven, eight minutes, not like a, make one call if you feel the need. If you can't stand it, make one call, okay? I'll tell you what, if you wanna do something really creative with your, your time, Text three people in your, in your phone, text three people and tell them I was thinking about you and we should catch up soon. Do that. You want to do, text three people, just tell them, hey, I was thinking about you, we should catch up. 